hi guys welcome to another video in this video we are focusing in the software modeling the system or the software modeling is the process of developing abstract models of a system with each model presenting a different view or perspective of that system it is about representing a system using some kind of graphical notation which is now uh, almost always based on not notations in the UML. Models help the analyst to understand the functionality of the system. They are, they are used to communicate with customers, for example, or stakeholders or other people involved in the project or in the system development and we have uh, models and in this case the models can explain the system from different pers perspectives these perspectives are the, in the external internal structural and behavioral in the external perspective we're where you model the context or environment of the system and interaction perspective where you model the interactions between a system and its environment or between the components of a system a structural perspective where you model the organization of a system or the structure of the data that is processed by the system a behavioral perspective where you model the dynamic behavior of the system and how it responds to events. We have uh, some of the most important or, or most use, useful uh, types of UML diagrams for the system modeling. The first one is the activity diagrams which, which so chose the activities involved in the in a process or in data processing the use case diagrams which show the interactions between a system and its envi environment the sequence diagrams which show interactions between actors and the system and between system components the class diagrams which shows the objects classes in the system and the associations between these classes the state diagrams which show how the system reacts to internal and ex external events models of, bo of both the new and existing systems are using are used during requirements engineering if you remember that part the models of the existing system uh, help clarify what the existing, existing systems does and can be used as a basis for discussing its strengths and weaknesses. This uh, then lead the two requirements for the new system. When models of the uh, a new system we are used during requirements engineering to help explain the proposed requirements to other system stakeholders and normally engineers use these models to discuss design proposal and to document the system from implementation for that kind of, or that uh, system modeling we need to consider uh, four kinds of, of models the first one is the context and process models the context models are used to illustrate the operational context of a system they show what lies outside the system boundaries and architectural models show the system and its relationship with other systems in the system boundaries are established to define what is inside and what it 
outside the system they show other systems that are used or depend on the system be being developed the context models simply show the other systems in the environment not how the system being developed is used in that environment and the process models reveal how the system being developed is used in broader business processes UML activity diagrams may be used to define business processes model and we have an example in the picture about the UML activity diagram describing the processes of involuntary deten detention and the role of a mental health care patient management system in it. We have the interaction model. The types of interaction model can be represented in a model. Modeling user interaction is important as it helps to identify user requirements. Modeling, modeling system to system interaction highlights the communication problems that may arise. And modeling uh, component interaction helps uh, help us understand if a proposed system structure is likely to deliver the required system performance and dependability. The use cases were developed or originally to support requirement solicitation and now incorporated into the UML. In this case, the the or each use case represents a discrete task that involves external interaction with the systems. Actor in a use case may be people or other systems. Use case. Use cases can be represented using a UML use case diagram and in a more detailed intellectual tabular form format. And that is the first represent uh, yes the first representation or the modeling for interactions or that are form part of the interactions models. The second one it's the system to system interaction and component interactions that we can use uh, in this case the the uml sequence diagrams that are used to model the interaction between the actors and the objects within a system a sequence diagram show the sequence of interactions that take place during a particular use case or use case instance the objects and actors involved are listed along the top of the diagram with a dotted line draw vertically from these interactions between objects are indicated by an ordered arrows and we have for the interactions model in this case the or we can apply the use cases and sequence diagrams and we have other another kind uh, in this case the structural models the structural models of so of software displays the organization of a system in terms of the components that make uh, that system and their relationships. Structural models may be static models which show the structure of the system design or dyna dynamic models which shows the organization of the system when it is executing. You create uh, structural models of a system when you are discussing and designing the system architecture. The UML class diagrams are used when developing an object-oriented system model to show the classes in the system and the associations between these classes. And we can use all of the components of these class diagrams, the objects, 
the association, generalizations, inheritance, uh, aggregation, etc. And all of them form or are part of the structural models. The next one is the behavioral models. The behavioral models are models of the dynamic behavior of a system as it, it is executing. They show what happens and what is supposed, supposed to happen when a system responds to a stimulus from its environment. Uh, two examples or, or two types of of this is some data arrives that has to be processed by the system and some event happens that triggers system processing. Events may have associated data although this is not always the case. Many business systems are data processing systems that are primarily drive, driven by data. They are controlled by sequence of actions involved in processing input that are generating an associated output. They are particularly useful during the analyst or analysis of requirements as they can be used to show end-to-end -end processing in a system. Data-driven models can be created using the UML activity diagrams. Uh, we can use to the sequence the, the sequence diagram and the real time systems are often even driving that is the other type of behavioral models with minimal data processing in this case for example a landline phone switching system response to events such as a receiver of hawk by generating a dial tone. Even driving models show how a system responds to external and internal events. It is based on the assumption that a system has a defined number of states and that events may cause a transition from one state to another. Even driver models can be created using the UML state diagrams. Then for behavioral models, we can use uh, activity diagrams, sequence diagram, and state, state diagrams. And that are the four kinds of models uh, that, uh, and we can apply some of the UML diagrams to this particular or classification of models and thank you guys for watching this video see you soon in the next videos and remember probably UTR